it, everyone, and welcome to the Liddell 7 Show. I'm here this week to teach you the art of the striptease with a little shock therapy. We'll take a trip to a virtual world, go on a real long bicycle ride, and play with Barbie dolls. Confused? Well, you won't be after this week's Liddell 7. One of the more colorful characters we lost in 2009 was Alice Schiller, a vaudeville legend. When Alice's husband told her that he had bought a burlesque club back in the 1950s, she cried at the embarrassment. But Alice, who grew up in an Orthodox Jewish household, quickly found a way to make the striptease kosher. Well, sort of. Under her management, the now legendary Pink Pussycat went from a seedy strip joint to a high-class gentleman's club, featuring dancers that were more entertaining than salacious. Men would even come with their wives. You don't see much of that today. Here's a look at someone who's carrying on Alice's legacy. When I was a little girl, I started taking ballet lessons from the age of four. I did used to like to put on shows. I also used to steal my mom's lingerie when I was a little girl. I didn't put on shows with the lingerie, but I did used to practice doing a strip tease in front of the mirror when I was quite young. Shock therapy is making a comeback with Dr. Yoram Vardy's most recent experiment. Vardy delivered shockwaves to men suffering from erectile dysfunction. The treatment restored penile blood vessels and made a huge improvement in patients' erectile function. Vardy's research, based in the University of Haifa, continues to test and fine-tune this treatment. When Hussam Abdu was 15 years old, he found himself standing at an IDF checkpoint begging Israeli soldiers to help him take off his suicide belt. He isn't the only child who was sent to die for the sake of jihad. It only took $20 to convince Hussam Abdu to go out on his mission. The documentary, The Making of a Martyr, explores this disturbing trend and shows the way in which extremist Muslims push their children into taking their own lives. It's a small film, but powerful. They showed me how to use the belt. They showed me out and said there were soldiers in a location and that I should jump among them. The Making of a Martyr is the story of children transformed into killers. Hussam, just 15, was offered paradise, rides on a Ferris wheel, and 20 bucks. In the end, he couldn't do it. Arrested by Israeli soldiers, he's now doing time. Have you ever wondered how your internet experience differs from that of someone living in the Arab world? After Iran's post-election media shutdown, this question has become particularly important. Dr. Tal Pavel is an expert on the Muslim world's internet usage, particularly when it comes to governmental restrictions. He is currently doing research at the Moshe Dayan Center for Middle Eastern and African Studies and at the NetVision Institute for Internet Studies. Dr. Pavel joins us in our studio for a live interview. Come on, doctor, I won't bite. Happy to meet Hello. you. Thank you for joining us. So we're currently living in a world with virtual worlds and different environments. Virtual worlds are becoming increasingly more complex and intertwined with reality. How is this affecting the Arab world? Um, the virtual world, what's called the metaverse, is uh, the current, uh, the current uh, uh, phase of uh, the internet, as well as uh, uh, social networks uh, like uh, Facebook and Twitter. Um, in those social networks, as well as uh, in the virtual world, uh, citizens in the Arab world uh, and users can use uh, um, the internet uh, and those world, virtual world, to communicate, to receive the information, to receive uh, news, to produce news, um, to get involved in uh, activity, political activity, social activity, and even religious one. We're going to take a look at a clip from Second Life, which we know is a virtual world that's being used as a tool for public diplomacy, as well as a venue for cultural dialogue within the Islamic world. So let's take a look. We have so many freedoms. We don't even understand how much freedom we have. If you look at the world today, we are first world women, regardless of what country we're living in. Might be the United States, might be Bahrain, might be Egypt, might be somewhere else. We are first world women. Why? How can I tell that? Well, because you're here on Second Life. You obviously have a high-speed internet connection and sufficient free time to come on here. And that means you have more freedom than probably 80% of the women on this planet. And this is a big responsibility from Allah, and we have to utilize that responsibility correctly. So what can we take from that image? 
Well, as we saw in this clip, uh, the internet enable uh, women uh, in the virtual world as in uh, the social networks uh, to raise their voice and uh, uh, in this case in religious uh, matters uh, they can uh, um, create uh, uh, religious uh, um, courses and uh, um, all kind of uh, uh, preaching in, uh, as we saw in this clip um, but uh, also to secular activity uh, as we talked about it before. Some of the videos you sent us from YouTube, they've been taken down due to uh, terms of use violations. Now, what is the difference when YouTube ch chooses to take a video off or when a regime chooses to block a video? Well, uh, it's not simple for a regime, uh, even in, in mid the Middle East, to block a uh, very popular website like uh, YouTube. Uh, there are few cases of uh, blocking uh, these uh, popular sites, YouTube, uh, but it's happened all over the Middle East. Uh, it's not uh, very familiar, but it's happened. The regimes in, uh, in uh, the Middle East block all kinds of, uh, of websites uh, all over the year uh, from two main reasons, uh, social and political. To watch the full interview, click on the link. Otherwise, continue on to the next item. Barbie recently celebrated her 50th birthday with a makeover. Instead of getting a new hairstyle or redoing her makeup, Barbie has toned down her look to conform to Islam's rules of modesty. Barbie can now be seen in head coverings and burqas. Ruth Handler, the late creator of the Barbie doll, had said that she wanted to show little girls the diverse choices available to them by representing all types of women. What other lessons can Ruth and Barbie teach their fellow Jews? The award-winning film, The Tribe, explores these very questions. Take a look. Within this circle, there was a woman named Ruth who created the Barbie doll. A Jewish woman created Barbie. Maybe Barbie can explain something about how this generation responds to being Jewish today. Since the old days, Jews refer to themselves as members of the tribe. Manuela Zonenschein couldn't be more international. She was born in Brazil, raised in Illinois, and will soon be heading off to Oxford. She enjoys French food and spends a lot of her time studying Chinese agricultural policy. We sat down with Manuela to talk about what she believes is the biggest story of her life. I'm a journalist and you have to go where the biggest stories are and China really is the biggest story for the rest of my life. I think Chinese and Israelis actually have a lot of interesting similarities. I got out of the airport and immediately had to start bargaining with the cab driver uh, in Tel Aviv and uh, coming from China that was like perfectly natural. Roy Jinji Sadan wanted to go where no Israeli had gone before. Two and a half years ago he decided to travel around the world on a bicycle even though his only cycling experience was riding around his neighborhood as a little kid. Along the way, Jinji swam with whales in Mexico, lost 15 kilos in Alaska, and met wonderful people. Here he is talking about his awesome experiences. I started from nothing. I started to how to fix, fix a tire, a flat tire. And uh, day by day, I started to train more. I started to know how the feeling of the road on a bicycle. And uh, after eight months of planning and training physically and also mentally, I said that to the world that I'm going to cycle in, cycle around the world. That's all, folks. Send us an email at 7 at Liddell.net. We want your feedback, people. And log on to our site for new videos, contests, and a whole lot more. We leave you now with Israeli folk rock breakout band of 2010, Amiram Inc. This is their latest video made completely with the help of volunteers to aid African refugees in Israel. Take a listen and enjoy. Ciao for now. So let them talk. Let them say what they want. We do what we gotta do to survive. Cause what's another man's life, another man's wife, another man's child As long as we're alive, as long as we're alive